First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5 Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HE Travel at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One time use only, not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HE Travel to save 20%. For the first time in uh, in a year, over a year, in studio, the county executive. Good yeah, morning. it's good to be. I had to, I had to remember how to maneuver the hallway. Oh, yeah, so yeah. It's been a while. So, <laughs> so it's good to be back. So. Uh, it's good to have you in here. And, uh, boy, have we all been through a lot, right, in the last oh, yeah. year. It's hard to believe. I mean, and, and you know, you waited for a time for things to loosen up. Yeah. And, and to, to this extent, I mean, we loosened up a little bit last year, but not. Yeah. Not because there were still so many restrictions, but now, you know, being able to see people do stuff. Yeah. And it's nice different. you don't have to wait as long when you're here, you know, as um, opposed to on the phone. <laughs> right. We get you right in. I mean, we've learned over the I last year. Uh, no. He doesn't like to wait. So <laughs> I think it's Phil more than, <laughs> more than the county yeah. executive. Yeah. All right. I'm so I'll tell you that when we go to restaurants. Too, <laughs> um, so and, and the beauty is up here, we don't normally have to wait in, uh, this in this true. area. This right? is true. No, we don't. Um, no, okay. We don't. So uh, we were, you know, talking to Dr. Hall about the last year, yes. and it's just, I, I don't know why we're treating this as it's a reunion, but we've had many people in studio today, mm-hmm. which is the first time. He's um, done a great job, and, I, and then he so has. That, well, in, in the entire healthcare system, yep. I and mean, in, yeah. in, in this, in particular, I'll speak for our, I mean, I'll, all around, but I'll speak for our area, the the hospital systems, the urgent cares. I mean, really. Above and beyond, and 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 still, I mean, still, you know, dealing with this. But you know, as as we all are, but yeah. they really, you know, I mean, they you, you really have to, you know, you don't know what to do for them to right. say, you know, thanks, you know. So well, and your, I mean, when you were doing all those briefings in the beginning, your health director, she was just oh, phenomenal. Was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, think I, how long know, it's was, been going yeah, on. You've I, had two health directors, health directors for all yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and so. We have, and uh, and our people have been, you know, and one of the things I think I said. The last time, or, or numerous times, when we did all these pods and we had people that volunteered or, or, or you know, signed up and we were doing whatever. I mean, you know, people wanted to do that. I mean, people yeah. wanted to be there. I mean, for I mean, people that had no, you know, even no health uh, experience or whatever. Just you know, what can I do? You know, what right. just to be there to be a part of that whole yeah, the whole vaccination process, but the whole wellness part pro. It, it's a yeah. piece of uh, you're you're participating in history. I you mean, are, we all did, uh, but when you can say you were part of the vaccination process, that's a pretty big moment in in history that um, we didn't realize that we were living through. I guess uh, it just all just happened so very very quickly. Yeah. Um, now, uh, if we can go a little away from that, yeah. um, what does it mean though? Does it mean you can? We're kind of going back to normal. We haven't hit seventy yet in the state. No, we haven't hit Close. 70 in the state, but we're just, you know, when I looked at the number, I don't know if it's a point and a half away or somewhere yeah. in yeah, Well, today's Friday, like so. That. so. Today, I guess, would be the day. You we'll were just calling wait Friday. The, we'll wait yeah. and see what the numbers are or what, what's going to come out of it. Um, you know, we're close to 60 on, um, um, you know, first doses, uh, you know, um, over 50 on fully yeah. fully vaccinated again using you know the backup everybody said yeah. well i thought we were over 50 well we were when the number was 18 and above right, right you know right. and then we dropped down to 12 and yeah. above and that yeah. changes the whole percentages but so still that's pretty good it's almost very 60 good. no it's very good and we put out the numbers of the schools of the students yesterday which I saw know, that. we've done yeah. that we've yeah. done as in county government not you know not in, inclusive of, of what the state or other areas have, or other entities have done and, you know, trying to get more of that. And and the good news with that, I, I guess I'd like to say, too, is that you know, we haven't had any incidents of students getting ill or, you know, any anything that side I'm aware of. Yeah. I mean, you know, normal side effects, I guess, is right, the way yeah. to put it. I don't want to say that no one got, you know, no one got a fever or no one got right, sick right. or no one got nauseous or whatever. I'm just saying that. There were no, you know, to our, you know, I check with Dan all the time every day. I, you know, do we have anything? And, you know, and is there anything, especially with the with the young people? I mean, certainly, you know, I mean, did anybody get seriously ill? And, and we haven't had that. It was interesting to see. Whitesboro, by the way. Yeah, Whitesboro. Whitesboro been been phenomenal. They, yeah. they were like first in line when we said 
when we you know we I've talked to the superintendents every every month and you know a few times a month at times um and as soon as we said look we'll come and do a pod you know at your school and, and you know Brian was we're in come can you come tomorrow yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah. You now they've been great and all the schools have been great i mean we've been trying to but you know it's again getting it, it goes back to the you know the you know just like with the adults and and if in in this case you know parents got to be comfortable with their with their with their children getting the vaccine, so you got yeah. you got to deal with so that. So, how does that work? Do they um, if if they're un, under the age of eighteen, they have to they have, have to parental have parent. consent. They have to have parent, parental consent, and we wanted parents at the oh at, at the, the okay, the, all right. Yeah, we think that's very important. I mean, yeah. we we really have to have. You just can't mm-hmm. even with the consent. Because yeah. how do you know? Right, and yeah. you know, and look, that's the last thing. You know, liability-wise, whether it's the county or a health system or anybody wants to get into. Yeah, kids forge their homework signatures, you know. I mean, it would be very easy for them to sign the COVID form. I know you didn't, Andrew, but (laughs) Never. Um, Are you surprised by Utica schools, though? That that number's a little low. Yeah, well, that number has been low, and we've been been working with Utica the last, uh, you know, the last couple weeks and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and trying to get... You know, um, you know, more into that. And, and it's really about outreach. And that's one of the things we, you know, in working with the navigators, with the, the center and with the, uh, uh, with the community foundation and others going, literally going into the neighborhoods. Yeah. We're doing a mailing. We're doing mailings of, of over 13,000 homes, you know, targeted, that are targeted. Five, actually, five mailings of 13,000 each. Uh, targeted in, in, in various homes throughout the county and in those areas because we've been able to center into the census data and see where people are not vaccinated. Right. So that we can zone in and, and have our, our health department, but also the other agencies that we work with, uh, along with MBHS and, and, and others, to, to target those areas and hopefully draw those people in to get the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, the more the vaccine, the uh, the freer we all will uh, will feel. And can you reference what the numbers were? You said Whitesboro was pretty doing pretty yeah, well. Yeah, Whitesboro, really um, well. and I, I realize that schools have different populations. Sure. So, sure. which is why I Utica stands out. Um, for instance, Rome, one hundred and one students have been vaccinated. Utica, ninety four students. And Utica's size is is it's such a big so, yeah, school. I think Utica was up to I thought that was a ninety four hundred. I thought it was the last number. It might have been a little one hundred nine or something oh. like that. Oh, but I mean, okay. I mean right. whether or not that was but VVS eighty. That's pretty good. Well, that's good. And Whitesboro two hundred and thirty three students. Okay. Uh, and that's just again. Those are just our numbers. Right. This yeah. Oneida County. You know our pods. The Got ones it. that we've done. So oh, know, students, really be, good overall. students could have gone. Obviously, they could have gone to the SUNY seat. We don't, uh, I you know, see. It's hard for us to right. ext- extrapolate that data from the state. And I'll tell you that many, stuff. many people have um, the minute the eligibility came, the parents who who really are are, are believing the importance of getting vaccinated. Many had their kids they at did. a vaccine they center did. immediately. They did. So it was interesting because we talked to somebody who had said it was you know that we both know that had said yeah it's starting to slow down there. And yeah. I said, well, watch. When you see the, yeah, the eligibility go up, you're yeah. going to have all those people that were the first to go get the vaccine yeah. will be the first to have their kids do it. Uh, we have somebody yelling about, uh, so you were being yelled at because <laughs> you weren't doing anything on Nexus, and now the yelling is because you are doing on, uh, something on Nexus. And the complaint is what? That, um, that what the is county that? is on, the county's paying for the whole thing now. Right. Can, you, can I, you explain yeah. what all of that we means? Um, no, we're not. I mean, we're not paying for the whole thing. At least that's not the intent. And, you know, the intent of the resolution the other day was to what what had been and I've been uh, frankly resistant to at the beginning. But you know, understanding where this project has gone and with the pandemic, uh, the ability to stand behind the bonds uh, with the odd authority. Now, the odd authority is going to borrow the money. Uh, we are going to be a partner in the in the payment of those bonds, right. and that was what we had always anticipated mm-hmm. uh, through the, the through the occupancy tax or bed tax, as it's as it's as it's better known, uh, with a portion because I had the bed tax changed so we could use the money for capital expenditures like a nexus or anything yeah. else. Yeah. So a portion of the bed tax will be used to pay the bonds. The audit authority, as well as their arrangement with Mohawk Valley Garden, will supplement the other part of the. Bond payments. The understanding on and what we passed the other day is that if they should default 
or have the inability to pay right, for right. A, a certain reason, that we would stand behind that and pick up those payments. That is equal to a cosigner on a, right, on a, on right. a, on a business car loan, loan yeah. car yeah. loan, uh, you know, partnership. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in some some regards, especially if someone has better credit than the other, right? And which we do. Mm-hmm. It's not a criticism of the auto authority. They don't have the experience in borrowing. Right, thirty thirty million dollars. They never mm-hmm. have. They've always their their bonding limit up until uh, a year, uh, two years ago, was two million. You know, we got that changed. Uh, you know, I got that through with uh, Senator Griffo and at the yeah, time yeah. uh, Assemblyman Brindisi to fifty million that they could borrow for. So they have that ability. They just don't have the experience. So they need right now for that amount right, a right. cosigner. Yep. And basically, we are <clears throat> now. You know, is it possible that, that everything could, you know, we, we go, let's say we go into another pandemic well, and you know, the pandemic sudden, aside, I mean, yeah. pandemics aside, I mean, those are, those are circumstances we're all going to be in trouble with. Correct. <laughs> so, yeah, right. I mean, I'm not making light of that in that regard. I mean, at all. As we were. You know, the issue about, you know, where we stand behind it is if, if Nexus f- fails now, fails. all indications point towards a, a very successful entity mm-hmm. because of what it can do yeah so i mean you know the the you know while yes there's risk there's a great reward here too i mean if nexus is successful which if they're successful there's no problem here right right and that's that's what we have to look to so you're, but but I think you're betting on a pretty good um well we, we and we still have we still have a little bet. ways to go here yeah well it's yeah. Nice i don't want to say that this is a done deal and everything is all you know tied up in in, in a nice bow we have to now uh finalize an agreement between the county and the auto authority on these terms right you know what happens what is the yeah. term if if they if they have trouble if they don't make a revenue payment you know either the auto authority or through through mog valley garden uh, you know if nexus does not achieve the uh, profit margin that has been established you know if they go a dollar under, what what happens? Yeah, what happens? When do we trigger? I mean, so when do, and we have some other pieces to work out in that. Uh, do, does that all have to be worked out before construction resumes? It, it it probably will, but you know, I think what the the bigger comfort right now for them to get, you know, they they've got to go borrow right yeah. now. They've got to go to market and see what first of all, well, how much they're going to borrow, and what that interest rate is, and that'll determine the the payments. I think this gives the uh, the contractors, the wherewithal to say, okay, you got somebody standing behind this project. Right, right. Now let's let's get back yep. to work. You know, and and certainly they need to get paid. I understand that. You know, we need to. You know, but they also at the same time have to drop their lawsuit before we even engage right. into yep. the the construction. Piece. How many? Uh, the one, and I. This might be a, a question for Rob Ashton, but maybe you can answer it. 